a good one for you today and in this video i'm actually going to be showing you a actual interview i had with a closer that was looking for a job at our seven-figure agency, Estate AI. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, we run a pretty top-notch chip, and uh, we probably have one of the best world-class sales organizations in the social media marketing agency space, hands down, especially for real estate. So we're really selective with the type of closers that we bring up. So in this video, you're gonna see my exact interview process, how I interview people, the questions that I ask, why I ask them those questions. And you're gonna see in the call, I kind of clip up certain parts where I talk about why I did certain things. Um, so I'm super excited about this video. I think this is gonna be super helpful if you're looking to hire closers, if you already have closers and you wanna figure out how to bring on better quality closers. And then at the end of the video, I want you guys to drop below if you think I hired him or not. If you guys want my entire PDF on like my interview questions, how I interview people, if this video gets at least 200 likes then i will go ahead and drop that below for you guys i hope you enjoy the video once again this is instrumental jesse how are you i'm well yourself i'm doing well i'm doing well um i'm ready to dive in if you are let's do it okay sounds like a plan so for starters um i i, I enjoyed our conversation yesterday and uh, I, I just wanted to ask what really struck out to you about the position that made you want to apply. For sure. Um, for me, it's really surrounding myself with a team that wants to succeed and a team that's here to develop their team. Um, I've been a part of teams before where it's all about the owner and all about this one certain person in the group environment. Um, I obviously know you have a very, very, very good reputation around the space as well. Um, I've done a bit of research about you, Estate AI. Um, it's more about me being around an environment that really that you want to see succeed, that you're willing to really put in the effort for your team to see go the next level. Um, and of course, look, the rewards come from that. Um, but yeah, for me, it's actually more about the culture um, and doing the job. So um, I really, hence why I asked yesterday as well, that wasn't just fluffing around. It's I want to be around a culture that, um, what's the right word? Yeah, I sort of just want to be around a culture that I just want to be around. Um, I'm going to be doing it every single day. I want to make sure it's with the right people. Now, why, why do you think you'd be a good fit for the role, Jesse? For sure. Um, I'm very hands-on. Um, so i am be the first one to always tell you that I'm not perfect, but I'll also be the first one to tell you I'm do whatever it takes to get there or try to be in that, sorry, try to be perfect in that way. Um, so I think I'll be perf I, perfect for the role. Yeah. I think I'll be right for the role for the fact is I'm willing to put in, um, I know what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not perfect. I know I've got to learn. So um, yeah, I'm just really ready to take it to the next level and be the right person for the role, I suppose. Gotcha. Now you mentioned culture in our company and you've done research, but what specifically about our company really resonates with you? Yeah, for sure. So um, obviously you hear around the guy, I'm part of Rise and everything. You obviously hear about um, yourself quite a bit around there. I've watched quite a lot of your coaching calls. Um, I know you've scaled two agencies to seven figures. Um, you just have a really good reputation around owning a company and really growing a lot of people. I know you've had a few people around in Agency Lab and Rise who have worked for you or you've done work with a lot of other people. So um, that to me shows that in short, you give a shit. Like you care about your company quite a lot and you really want to take it to a level where you're creating people and a culture that, and also the video that you shared yesterday. I have no idea of any other agency that gets together looks like they're having that much fun everywhere. Um, so yeah, like that, that's briefly, um, that's a bit of a hard question actually, but you just, I've come from a professional sporting background. Like that's what I know best. Um, all of that is culture, being around your friends, like it's a family. Um, and what I've sort of seen myself, um, learnt myself and even on the video yesterday, um, and even just talking to you, you can see that that is sort of what, the state AI feels like. All right, so let's take a pause here and break down why I asked them these two questions. So 
First and foremost, culture is one of the most important things. A culture can make or break an entire company. I have seen it time and time again. If you have a toxic culture, if you have a toxic team, then people's performance will go down. We live in a world where providing a paycheck on time isn't enough anymore. And unfortunately, employers in the past have taken advantage of their employees. And now the modern workforce is looking for more benefits because they understand how valuable they are and they realize their value because they are. A team will make or break uh, your entire organization. So we're really protective over our entire culture. And so that's why we go ahead and break down those culture questions. And it's a massive green flag for me when someone has already done research like Jesse has done. He's done research on the company. He likes the culture. He resonates with the culture and he's openly uh, saying that this is what he's looking for. That's not necessarily a slam dunk, but it's moving in the right direction. Like, okay, this person can at least pass the first part of the interview, which is a culture check, right? You want to focus on culture first. Skills second, quality control third. I can always train on skills, but culture is not something I can train on. Now, what about the industry? You know, the real estate agent uh, industry, I guess you'd say, <laughs> a real estate agent. What about selling to them excites you? Um, they're people, people. They're people, they're people person. That, I don't know how to say that word, but um, their job is to talk to people. Again, like I said yesterday, I love talking to people. Um, I worked in real estate for the pure factors. I enjoyed talking to people every single day. I like the challenge of selling. I like the challenge of figuring it out. Um, so two real estate agents, I know they can be really difficult people to sell to. I understand that. And they're 99% of them, whatever it is, is well, 90, 80% of them are broke. Um, so they say. I just enjoy talking to people. I find real estate agents pretty easy to talk to. They're probably one of the most down to earth people. Their job is to communicate with people and build a relationship. Um, so being able to do that towards them, um, I like. Uh, I've worked with lawyers. Um, they're difficult. PI attorneys are difficult. Um, they're very, very straightforward, straight cut to the point. Um, real estate agents, I find you can sort of talk to them a bit easier. And what excites you the most about the position in general? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's something different for me. Like, it's very different for me, which I like and I love. Um, obviously, like I said, I've had the agency side. I learned pretty quickly what I enjoyed about it. And this is it. Like, I like the selling side. Um, so being able to consistently all day, every day, really be able to do what I found the most enjoyment out of. Um, is what excites me about the role. And are you fully comfortable with a hundred percent commission based sales role? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And are you also fully comfortable with a, a full time commitment? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. So there's the old saying, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Now look, I don't wake up every day and I get excited over the fact that I run a lead gen marketing agency for realtors but i get excited about helping our team i get excited about solving problems i get excited about growth right so i find things about the specific thing that i get excited for i'm not expecting someone to come on our team and get excited about just talking to real estate agents all day now if that if they do like jesse may get a little excited over that's a plus what i'm really looking for in this question is number one if they're they if they're not excited about some aspect of the role and they can get motivated and get out of bed and say, I'm excited to go to work and it's Sunday and you had the entire weekend off and you're excited to to hit the phones the next day. That's someone that is always going to perform better. I don't care if their skill set is at 70% compared to someone who's at a 90% skill level, but that 90% person is not excited. The 70% person who is excited will outperform the 90% person that is excited. So that's really important for us. And I'm going to ask another question to Jesse here in a second about other businesses, side gigs, et cetera, because, because if someone has one foot in, one foot out, 
then they're not all in. And we need someone who is all in on what we do here at Estate AI. And look, and I encourage people if they want to have their own business to do it, but do it on your own time. Do it full time. Go all in because the man who chases two rabbits catches none at the end of the day. So we want to make sure that our team can truly focus on what they're doing. So it's really important to us that they're fully committed and there's no other distractions preventing them from achieving their full potential. And do you have any other businesses or side gigs? Um, no, not, not really. I do have, well, I am partnered in one that like brokers law firm leads. Um, but that's not really off the ground at all. So, um, yeah, I much prefer, would much prefer be able to really do this full time. Okay. And I know you had a SMA in the past, so, you know, have you considered starting another SMA or another business in the future? Um, in the future, I'm not sure. Right now, for me, I want to be around a team environment where I can just succeed and be the best. Look, I, I'm i as loyal as someone would come. Um, if I'm around a team that wants to see me succeed, I'm going to give 110% to that team 24-7. Um, if something comes down the future, I'm not sure. But for me, I'm going to be honest right now, no, I'm not looking to do that. Um, I just want to be around a team that I can actually do what I want to do, enjoy every day. Um, I mean, for example, it's 2.08 a.m. here in Australia. Um, this is my time. I, I like working. I like. I enjoy doing all of this stuff. So, no, for me right now, it's, in all honesty, just being around a team, really learning, doing what I want to do. Um, and look, if something happens in the future, it happens. But right now, it's not a priority at all. Okay. Um. I know you've had the SMA, but what's your pri you know, previous work experience before that? Yep. So uh, before SMA, I did real estate. Um, so I did that for about 12 months where we sold about 4 million in our first year. Um, before that as well, I played professional sports um, and I did work in a construction job sort of towards the end of that career when I did my injury. Um, but that's pretty much my career i'm 23 um so yeah pretty young when, but when did you uh stop doing the sma uh oh start of this year it would have been um i can actually tell you hang on and what have you been doing since then not much to be honest um that's the hard part i've been figuring out what i wanted to do so i stopped agency uh, October, no, hang on, it's for my birthday, September. It would have been August. July or August, I stopped sort of agency world. Um, I was going to start another one. I got, I, I was really bad at fulfillment. That was my part. So I sort of got out of agency world and since then um, took a big step back in life because I was just not enjoying the fulfillment side. Took a big step back. Um, had a couple months off, not doing much, and then traveled for a bit. Went to Indonesia. That was fun. Um, and then kind of come back. Had the brokering side, which I was starting with a friend. Uh, had a couple of clients, but I, I was I'm very hands off with that. It's all his. Um, and sort of just figured out what I wanted to do, and now I'm here. And why'd you stop the uh, real estate? Uh, as in, what I was working in the past. Um, I hated cold calling people. <laughs> and door to door sales. Um, I got into it pretty young as well. Like, well, I mean, 21, 22, that's still pretty young, I would say, especially in real estate. I really enjoyed it, but um, I wanted a different challenge. I wasn't expecting the amount of cold calls. Uh, like, all day, every single day, was sitting there cold calling people, which now I don't, I genuinely do not care. But um, at the time, I was always just chasing more. Um, my entire, well, all, all I wanted to do at that time was have my own business and I was um, in a position with agency lab to have my own and it worked well and I was able to do that full time. Um, so I took a step back from that. But yeah, I'm not really sure. I just didn't really enjoy it as much as I wanted to regarding more the um, cold calling side and door-to-door -door sales side. Um, the dealing with people or, or what even even the hot lead stuff the stuff that came in I like dealing with 100% but it was the really cold stuff that I just did not enjoy and 
has anything changed with that, or is that something you still don't enjoy? Um, no, no, nothing's changed with it. Um, oh, sorry, everything's changed with it. Uh, with my industry, I learned pretty quickly that because <laughs> I was doing everything as well, so calling all leads, doing all that. So no, it's completely changed. Um, it does not bother me anymore as much. I think it took me a little bit to learn that, um, especially in cold sales, that getting told to buck off was almost more of a compliment. Um, not that you like doing it, but yeah, I sort of struggled with that at the very start, but now I do not care at all. Um, in all honesty, I was probably even thinking about getting back into real estate eventually if I couldn't find a role that I enjoyed. So, um, yeah, that's sort of where I'm at with it. So I hope you guys are finding this post-interview analysis helpful. And guys, I want you to drop your comments below of what you guys think about Jesse and if you think we should hire him or not. But the reason why I try to pry about what he didn't like in his past job, because he had a sales-related job, and there's obviously going to be overlap in the positions, and I want to make sure that he's not going to run into the same roadmaps so that he can be as successful as possible if he it is someone that we hired and if he's not based off the interview then i'm not going to bring him in because i don't want to do him a disservice and i don't want to waste our company's resources time so he mentioned not liking cold calling and someone who's applying for a sales role they have to be willing to call and cold calling and typically when people don't like something it's because they're not good at it so the fact that he doesn't like to call people on the phone or he didn't like in the past was a massive red flag now Maybe he did a 40 in slip and he acknowledged that it's still the same issue or maybe he just messed up. I don't know. But he mentioned that he has worked on it and now he doesn't mind it at all. But he says doesn't mind it. He doesn't say he loves it. Most people don't love cold calling. But that is something in a sales organization you want someone to get excited about. Get excited about rejection and viewing these roadblocks as fun challenges to overcome. What were you strong at with running your agency? Um, talking to people and relationship side. Um, I was very good at relationships with the agency, like really good. Um, in fact, I met up with two of my clients in Indonesia that flew from Thailand to Bali, um, for the pure fact to come and see me. So, and that was with a two month long contract and they came from there. So that was pretty cool. Um, but really enjoyed the whole relationship side and building that, um, what else? I've said that about five times. What else did I, was I good at? I did enjoy building systems. I wasn't very good at it. Um, again, I was a one-man band, so it was a bit pointless of me building my own systems. But um, I enjoyed the thought of that. And I enjoyed selling and the relationship side. So that's sort of what really interested me in the closing role. Okay. And... Um... What what were your weaknesses in running the SMA and the and the real estate gig? Uh, fulfillment in SMA. <laughs> um, so the first one, the solo one, was fine. I just um, I just wasn't very good. I I charged way too little for what I sort of overpromised on it because I was very new to it. Um, still did well with the clients, but was hard on the retention side because a couple of them just didn't stay. Um, and then the second one that we scaled pretty highly in the first month, learned pretty quickly that it's scaled way too quickly without any system. So again, fulfillment really struggled. So SMA side that, um, real estate side, like I was sort of talking to you yesterday, the preparation side on real estate, I was never expecting, um, how in depth that is, um, all the contracts, knowing everything back to front. Um, so that's sort of what I struggled with that on the real estate side, but once I got around that, um, I was, I was enjoying it, but yeah, also the cold calling side, wasn't a big fan of that at the time. (laughs) So you'll see later on, I ask about his real estate experience. I'm trying to see how long he was focused on a project for, because if someone's only doing something for a short period of time, what it shows me is that if they hop into our company out of state AI, they may you know, try it out for a month, but then the next month they're leaving because it gets a little too hard. So it's definitely a red flag, something that we're looking out for. Now, one thing that he did say is a green flag is that he ran an agency before. And if you're hiring someone for a sales position in the SMMA, some of the best hires you can make are 
entrepreneurs, people that, you know, some sort of skill set that's really powerful, like sales, like marketing, but they just weren't able to run their own business because they completely lacked another skill set. Those are people that you want because you can leverage them and really capitalize on the things that they're good at. So that is a green. And just trying to think. Um, when it came to your SMA, what was the most amount of uh, money you sold and uh, deals that you've closed in a month? And then what was the cash equivalent of that? Yep. So we got to 38. I did have 38.8 or 38.9 in the month. We got up to that was revenue. Uh, that was four clients. Um, to spread that out. And I believe the highest I collected was 12 and a half uh, for two months. So it was about six months. Uh, sorry, six grand per client. So that was pretty cool. Um, and, sorry. How long were you running the SMA for? That one was literally a month. So that was pretty much signed four clients in the first month. Um, and it was 38.8, which is awesome. Um, and then so that was revenue cash collected. I was 30% then I tried to keep margins that I can't, my biggest also issue is I was always merging ad spend and my own profits. Um, so cash collected, it was about 10,000, I imagine. I'm pretty sure it was profit. But again, a lot of that went back into um, the fulfillment side because I was really struggling on that side. So um, what I walked out was not a crazy amount because I've always been, you know, if you promise to do something, you do it. You don't just take the profits for yourself. Um, so, yeah, it was about 10,000 collected or just over at 38.8, I'll say 39 um, revenue. Okay. And what motivated you to, like, close that amount of money um, at such a young age? I'm very money-driven as well. Um, <laughs> I like money. I, I want to have a better life. That's the whole reason as to why I started all this. The reason I got into real estate. Um, I, I'm, I'm money driven. I, I, I am. Um, and it just helps that I'm very good at talking to people. And um, I'm not a perfect salesman, but um, I enjoy selling. I have a lot to learn, but um, it just works hand in hand that two things I like, people and money, can um, work together. Okay. And... You talk about liking money. What are their, what are your monetary goals? Um, so definitely, look, my my whole life, I've wanted to do forty k a month. Um, well, it's possible. I'm not not sure, but that's a monetary goal for me. Um, so about four hundred a year. That is a big goal of mine. Um, doing twenty k short term, like twenty k a month for two hundred thousand in a year. Um, short term goal, but long term, getting to about four hundred a year. And why that goal? Why that number specifically? It seems like you've thought about it before. Yeah, 400, I'm not sure. To me, that's, that's right way of saying it. That's comfortable F you money um, in my eyes. That's that's just always been a goal of where I've wanted to get to. Um, short term, it's pretty much I've just halved it um, and said, look, I really do believe I can get there. Like I do. Um, so that's sort of why that number exists. Like that is genuinely half of where I want to get to, if not more, you know, if I can go earn six figures a month, absolutely. But um, for me right now, that is the goal and the numbers. Yeah. So this is a huge green flag. So points to Jesse for this one. Ambition is really important for closers. So I want to find people that are extremely money motivated and have big income goals. And I want to find out why they have those income goals. Because yeah, sure, closers help people. But at the end of the day, it's kind of a role where you have to be a little selfish and you have to want to make a lot of money. And those that want to make a lot of money are going to make you a lot of money as an agency owner. So make sure when you're hiring, you want to find people that have those big income goals because they're going to work a lot harder. Someone who has a goal of only making five, six thousand dollars a month versus someone who has a goal of making fifteen thousand dollars a month, the person who wants to make fifteen thousand dollars a month has a much higher expectation, therefore, much more higher ceiling before they feel comfortable versus the person who has that lower ceiling. And obviously the person who has the higher ceiling is going to close more deals because they have to in order to feel content. And what are you going to do if, you know, with that money once you hit 40K? 
That is a really good question. That's a great question. I've never thought of that. Well, actually, that's why I have never been asked that. Um, investments, obviously. I mean, I'm 23, set myself up. Obviously, look, <laughs> I want to have some fun with my own. I want to go travel um, if I can. Um, I do like cars, but to me, it's more just the comfortability of it all. Um, I have a property right now. I wouldn't mind expanding that portfolio. That'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, for me, it's more just the comfortability of having it there, of being able to go, hey, look, I've reached one of my goals. What's next? Um, so yeah, it's probably more the comfortability of just and achieving that goal more than anything else. I mean, yes, traveling would be great. Um, but again, if that directly affects me earning the money that I want to earn, that's not going to happen. Um, I'm a little bit materialistic at the moment. I'm not going to lie about it. So I wouldn't mind a nice car, but um, it's not a massive goal for me either right now. But yeah, for me, it's more just reaching that goal, achieving it, and then figuring out what to do. But yeah, probably putting in investments. My brother's um, works at the stock market here in Australia. So That's he'd be able to help out a bit. What about um, how many calls did you take that month? You hit 38,000. 38, yeah. Um, actually, I wonder, oh, I won't have it on this computer. Um, a few, I think it was about 12, 12 calls, about four closed. So it's about, about, yeah, 30, 33, so 33, yeah, 33%. Um, yeah, it would have been about 12 calls, okay. uh, four closed. Okay. And what about your favorite sales coach, mentor? Who is that? I like Sabri Subi quite a lot right now. Um, so he owns King Kong here in Australia. He's on Shark Tank here in Australia. Um, probably Sabri right now. I just can relate to a lot of his stuff a lot better. Um, obviously, I like Formosi and stuff, but um, yeah, I quite like Sabri and what he's doing. He's a bit different. Um, I like his straight to the point stuff as well. I don't like beating around the bush. Just get straight to the point when it comes to it. So. Yeah, I enjoy a lot of that stuff by him. What was your sales process like when you were selling uh, for your agency? Not great, winging it. <laughs> a lot of winging it. Um, yeah, not 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 the best. I definitely could have closed a lot more with the right process. Um, again, it was one of those things that because I was trying to do so much, it, for me it wasn't, weirdly enough, it was the one thing that made me the money. It was probably one of the things that, um, I definitely didn't put enough thought into the actual process and like sales scripts and doing all of that. Um, that also, I think, maybe helped me on the other side, knowing that, look, like all I had was a demo, like a slideshow, a demo slide. I knew it. I didn't have a script. Um, I sort of just was able to go in there, answer objection, handle objections, get to know the person, um, which I think is also a good thing because I was really able to focus on what they wanted and needed at the time. Um, whether it was a different story if I had a script and I followed it more, not sure. Um, but yeah, it's probably one of the things I definitely need to be a bit better at um, that I look back on now and just realize. And how'd you get the the appointments? Um, Facebook DM, all of Facebook groups, Facebook DM. Didn't run cold out. Um, yeah, cold outreach, all cold outreach. Um, at email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Gotcha. Oh, um, uh, what about your reach on fire with it? It's cold calling. Sorry, what was that one? What are what are your non-monetary goals? Good question. Um, I love my life at the moment. I really do. Um, just to keep it, I have an amazing partner. I have two cats and a horse. Um, probably just non-monetary. I just keep that. Um, I have an amazing family, so just. Being around them more, um, yeah, non-monetary wise, I think just improving the life that I already have. Um, so yeah, nothing crazy, but I just love the people that I surround myself with, and you know, non-monetary as well as getting better and doing what I want to do more. So as in whether that's the job I'm at, whether that's the people I surround myself with, whether that's relationships in my external work life, um, just be better at all of them. What about your growth goals in as in personal and professional life 
Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I'm always, obviously, especially business, 100% is one of my biggest things and why I want to be a part of a team that wants to do that. It's, in fact, one of the only reasons I want to be a part of a team that does that is the growth. Um, mm-hmm. Personal, obviously, I think that comes, relates back to your business growth as well. Um, I, you know, when you're working, that's the majority of your time is spent working. So um, I think that directly correlates to that as well. So, um, and hence why, again, I just want to keep improving relationships with family, friends, all of that um, for the fact is I think that's directly, directly, I suppose, improving your personal life, which I believe comes off the business life. If that's making money, if that's doing all of that. Um, yeah, I think that's all ties itself together. And how do you see this role playing an integral part in your long-term vision? Um, and you can take a few seconds to think about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think a big thing for me, one, it's being around, it's, it's, it is doing something that I want to do and being around a team that wants to see me succeed, first of all. Um, using those skills to earn the money that I want to earn. Um, I actually really love working nights. And I mean, for me, it's early mornings, the times that it be this. So um, also having quite a bit of freedom during the day for me. So, you know, while you guys are sleeping, um, I'm able to do everything externally in my personal life that I really enjoy. Um, so, yeah, I think for the role long-term, it's really, first of all, improving my business and personal life long-term massively. Um, I want to be a part of a team for the next five to 10 years, like I do. Um, So being around that and and that directly correlating to my personal life, I think would be massive in my future. Um, And look, obviously, I want to earn the money that I want to earn as well. Um, And I'm going to do whatever it takes to get there. So being in a position to do that too, um, it's huge for me. Like it really is. It's, it's rare you get the opportunity to really do what interests you. So long-term being able to do that consistently every single day and the money that you want to earn and that correlating to your personal life, that's huge. Like that's massive. So yeah, I suppose that would be a big, a big factor for me. All right, guys, and this is probably going to be my last. Having alignment with sales philosophy is so crucial. I've had so many closers in the past that just go against the grain, and there's nothing wrong with that, with the way that the company's sales process and sales philosophy is. If you don't have one main unified way of selling that everyone can agree on and have alignment behind you're just gonna have a bunch of people selling their own way and the problem with that it's really hard to trade on it's hard to replicate and it's hard to reproduce over and over again if you guys are trying to build a real business you need to create a system a system that people can follow over and over and over again where you can bring someone who knows nothing about sales put them in it and they can be successful so that's ultimately what we're trying to do here Uh, so we want to make sure that their sales philosophy number one that they have one that they listen to people that we know about um, so that we can have make sure that there's some sort of alignment with how we would coach in our sales training and how they would run their sales call so super important question uh, and you want to make sure that you have alignment once again there's nothing wrong with a difference in opinion but as you begin to scale uh, it will become more and more difficult, especially since closers have very big egos and they always think that their way is the best. You want to make sure that you set that expectation from the beginning and you already have that alignment before you even enter into any sort of employment relationship. You to get offered this position, Jesse, how quickly could you start? Uh, tomorrow? Today? <laughs> um, yeah, like again, this is this is full time for me. Um, I'm not going to lie, I have interviews with... Um, Mike and Chris and a few of the other people that you introduced me to yesterday, which also thank you. Um, I do appreciate that. So, um, but yeah, like I am, I am actively looking and actively ready to get started. Um, yeah. Yeah. And what do you think I should know about you that I haven't asked you yet? Hmm. Question. Business or personal life? Anything. <laughs> <Or> both. <laughs> um, not much. I'm a very open book. Um, I don't have a crazy amount of friends. For me, the past year, year and a half has been really on um, doing what I want to do and creating a, a life that I want to live. I don't have 
many secrets at all. Um, in fact, I have, I don't think I'd have any secrets. So, um, not much. I could probably annoy people with how much I want to learn <laughs> as well. So potentially on that side, I could probably get a little bit annoying. But for me, it's genuinely because it comes from a right place, and I actually just want to learn and get better and um, impress the people that I look up to and want to be around. So there's not not much, I suppose, at all. Um, you probably asked me everything on this call already. All right. Um, do you have any questions for me, Jesse? What What are you specifically looking for in your closing and sales team? I suppose, like what? Um, yeah, I suppose that's. We'll start there. What What, what are you looking for at Estate AI? Like what What do you want to bring in? Um, and where do you see potentially myself fitting in with the team? So my business partner talks about this a lot, Matt, and he talks about anti-entropy. You have to be better than the last person we hired. We're yeah, looking yeah. for someone we're looking for someone who's ready to rip the hearts out of their competition on our team. We want you to come in and we want you to get to the top of the leaderboard. We need you to be hungry and we need you to want to make a lot of money, but also make a big difference, a big impact on the people that we enroll into our program cuz genuinely we have the best program out there for the real estate space and for real estate agents, hands down, no one can compete with us. With that said, um, we have a great culture, even though there's a lot of friendly competition and you want to get to the top of the leaderboard, we have an amazing culture. We want you to be able to fit into the culture. Uh, but ultimately, you have to be extremely hungry. You need to want and have that desire, that burning desire. Like it's like you either need to achieve this or at that point, you're, you're you know, it's it's about it's like you've died. You know, it's either success, success is almost as important as breathing. That's the mentality that you must have. Um, and you have to just be extremely hungry and coachable. Um, not coachable to the sense of you can take feedback, but coachable to the sense of you can take feedback and actually apply it because knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for Definitely. someone who wants to be in the top 1% because that's what we are. Definitely. Yeah, love it. For sure. Um, I wonder if there's any other questions. What's the process from here? I suppose if there is, um, someone's going to review. This. <laughs> Someone else is going to review this recording, and uh, yeah. we'll reach out to you with next steps. If uh, yeah. we were to move forward, if or if we weren't, we would also let yeah. you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, I suppose that's about it. I sort of I've touched on my biggest three things and that's culture um day-to-day -day life that's actually pretty important to me that one yesterday <laughs> that wasn't for any other factors i actually do care about that but um and what you look for so i don't believe i'm trying to think um if i have any other ones your training process for your closes actually because that's a big thing for me like i've touched on many times i want to get better and i am one of the people that <laughs> you can give criticism to and i'll take it and i will apply it what so all your... of our all of our closers, and I do have a hard stop now, actually, just so you know, so I can answer this last question. But all of our closers, they go through Cole Gordon's uh training portal um for sales training. And then we have daily meetings every single day. Um we are very aggressive with our training. Um, but that is that is ultimately the process. Yeah, cool. Perfect. All right. All right. Jesse, uh it's been an absolute pleasure and uh Hopefully we'll have the opportunity to work together. If not, I wish you the best of luck. And if you need anything, feel free to reach out. Take care. Thanks, Jared. I appreciate it. Bye. I'll see you guys in the next one. And make sure you guys select one of these videos that the YouTube algorithm just hand-selected for you. See you guys.